Hi everyone, so today I'm here to do the highly requested Draw My Life uh, tag video and uh, my life's a little crazy so I don't know how I'm going to do this but let's see how it goes. So it all started when a stork brought me to this small tiny Asian country called Nepal which is sandwiched by China and India. Usually when I tell people I'm from Nepal, um, they don't know much about Nepal. So the first thing I tell them is that the world's tallest mountain, Mount Everest, is located in Nepal and it's also home to the legendary Bigfoot. Um, we have countless stories of mountain climbers encountering the Bigfoot, which is kind of cool and I think I'm secretly related to the Bigfoot, especially when I look at my legs after I haven't shaped them for about a week. I'm like, yeah, that might be true. Now I'm drawing my little family. So first there's my dad and then there's my mom. And finally there's little me. I was the first child, very loved and spoiled. Um, both of my parents were missionaries so they would travel a lot from one village to another. I wasn't going to be the only child in the family for too long because one day when my parents were walking by one of the villages, they saw a house and on the patio there was a one-year-old boy who was really um, badly malnutritiated and he was just crying his eyes out. So my parents wondered where his family were and then they went over to the neighbors and asked him if, um, if anyone was watching after the boy. And the neighbor basically said that his mom recently passed away uh, with typhoid and his dad was an alcoholic. So there wasn't really anyone who was watching after him. After hearing that, my parents didn't have the heart to leave the boy behind. So they just waited until the nighttime um, and then the father came home. And after the father came home, they just had a really long talk. And my parents just asked him if they could take care of the boy until he had sobered up and had his life together. The boy's father agreed and realized that was probably the best thing to do. So now I had a little brother and his name was Ruben. When Ruben and I were little, we had our own little buckets where we used to shower. And that was kind of like our little swimming pool. We would play in there for hours. Um, and there's also this one funny story, family story, um, where uh, Ruben and I was sleeping um, in a little cradle and um, Ruben kind of pooped on his diaper and it kind of came out and it was all over the place and I was all you know dreaming I had no idea and Ruben didn't want to be in trouble he's the smarter one so he basically just wiped all the poo on me so my parents would think that I was the one who did it so yeah Beside that incident, Ruben was always a good brother to me. When we were at the age to go to school, we went to the same school and if any of the boys were being mean to me or uh, they were teasing me, Ruben would step up and show them who was boss. And even though he was my little brother, he protected me like he was my bigger brother. Another funny thing is my parents told me that I had no hair in my head till I was five. All I had was a little bit of fuzz and uh, when I did have hair, uh, my parents couldn't afford to take me to the salon. So my mom would cut my hair by herself and she would always ruin my bangs. So growing up, I always had terrible bangs. Besides terrible bangs, I also had terrible grades growing up. Uh, in fact, my parents said the only time I was first in my whole class was in kindergarten in a monthly test. So that's pretty embarrassing. But I did love to draw. I would doodle all over my notebooks and I loved dancing. Also, I've always been a huge animal lover. So when I was little, I'd pick up any abandoned little baby rats, mice, moles, um, even a baby squirrel once and I'd try to nurture them. Um, in fact, my whole family loves animals, so growing up, I had a lot of cool pets. My parents are pretty awesome, but when it comes to studies, they're like every other Asian parents. They expect you to either have A or B. Um, my dad never got a chance to go to school and have a good education, so he really stressed that we, uh, Ruben and I do really well in school. Since I was only good at dancing, drawing, and other activities, instead of encouraging me, my teachers would try to put me down all the time and they would say that I was worthless and I didn't have a bright future ahead of me. When I was 10 years old and Ruben was 9, um, my dad received a phone call from Ruben's father 
and he just told my dad that he was remarried he had his life together and he would like to visit Ruben and hopefully take him back home to the village with him so when my parents heard that they were devastated um, and I wasn't ready to say goodbye to Ruben that soon so it was just a big shock Ruben and I had a lot of good memories so saying goodbye was definitely the hardest thing but I chose not to be sad and more thankful that he was able to share nine years of his life being my brother. As time went by, my family started expanding again and one day my parents told me that I was gonna have a little baby sister soon. Then a stork brought in my baby sister and my parents decided to name her Pratitya, which is very similar to my real name which is Pratikya. When Pratitya was around 2 or 3, my parents told me that they had something really exciting to tell me. I thought they were going to have another baby but it was something else. Um, and they said we were going to America and I was really excited because when I thought of America I thought of good smelling people and skyscraper buildings like New York City. I thought America was filled with tall buildings like that and I wanted to live in one of those buildings. So off we went. My dad had a good friend in Colorado, so that's where we were going. And also, if you guys have been to the Denver airport, you guys know that the airport is really cool looking. I think it's supposed to be shaped like the Rocky Mountains, but for some reason, it kind of reminds me of popcorns. So then the car picked us up and we were driving. The Denver airport is out in the middle of nowhere. So there was just like dry lands uh, all around. And I was starting to freak out because this was not the America I had pictured in my head. Just when I was about to give up hope, I saw tall buildings in a distance and I got so excited I almost peed my pants, my dreams were finally about to come true. But sadly, the car turned and went somewhere else. That was actually the Denver downtown and we were going to live in a one bedroom apartment somewhere out in the suburbs. When reality sinked in, I was really upset felt like my dreams were all shattered and I did not get to live in a tall building and ride on an elevator. But life went on and my parents soon enrolled me in an elementary school really close by our place. The first day of school I was so nervous and scared because I had such a heavy accent and I couldn't really speak English that well. And just as I thought I had a really hard time fitting in and making friends, there was especially this one boy in my class who was really mean. He would laugh at everything I say and his friends would laugh along with him. Um, I tried everything to fit in. I even started wearing different type of clothes to see if they would accept me, but it didn't work. So elementary school was not fun at all. Now middle school was a lot of fun. I went to a big middle school, so I got to make quite a bit of friends. And my friends also taught me how to wear makeup, so that's when I started wearing makeup. Um, I thought I did a pretty good job back then, but now I think about it, I was probably a huge mess. And just around that time, my third sister was born, and my parents decided not to go with the crazy name, so they named her Rosie. Just when I was about to go on ninth grade, my parents decided to return to Nepal, and this was going to be a huge change for me because Nepali schools are really strict and I was already adjusting to the freedom in American schools. Looking at the bright side, I didn't really have much trouble making friends since they knew that I was coming from America, they were all curious to get to know me. Um, Nepali school rules are crazy. Every morning we would have to line up uh, like in boot camp and the teachers would go through the line and make sure that you followed all of the rules which means no bangs in your face, um, braided hair, black hair, white flowery fluffy ribbons, um, you have to have your school shirt on, school badge, school tie, school belt, um, school skirt, your nails should all be trimmed, no nail polishes, Oh my gosh, I can keep on going. No earrings. Um, your socks have to be higher than your knees. Your skirt has to be lower than your knees. And if you fail to do one of those things, there was severe punishments. So as you guys imagined, I got beat up a lot. I probably got beat worse than a pinata. And there was also this one time when the boys in my class, they did something wrong. I don't remember exactly what they did, but they had to carry their chair and their tables and run across the school track. Um, also, there was this one time when my friends, uh, we got in trouble and we had to stay in a push-up position 
for an hour and our arms were hurting our legs were hurting and the teacher was like no mercy he he beat us up with pipe on our behind so there was a lot of sore bums that day since Nepali school was getting too tough for me, my parents decided to send me back to America to finish my high school. So I went to a really small private high school. Um, high school was no bueno, it was not good at all. A lot of the students in the classroom had grown up together since they were little. So when I came into the picture, I felt like I was un uninvited. I was very lonely. I ate lunch by myself in the girls' locker room. Um, so yeah, it was uh, very sad. Just when I was about to graduate high school, my parents told me that there was another baby on the way and my dad was really hoping that the last baby would be a son, but it was a little girl. So um, there's my dad, my mom, me, my two sisters, Pratisha and Rosie, and finally a last sister who is Angelina. After high school, I went to Bible college and Bible college was probably one of the best things that has ever happened to me. I got to meet kids from all over America, all over the world. It was six months long, so everyone felt like they were family. And I also went to Colombia for a mission trip. Um, and everyone in Colombia were so warm, so kind. The food was amazing. So that's when I found my newfound love of traveling. After Bible college, I worked in an office and that was around the time when Michael Jackson had uh, passed away. So Michael Jackson was such an inspiration. I loved his dance. I loved his music. So I would go on YouTube to watch his music videos and to just remember him. Um, and that's how one day I came across a makeup tutorial and I was like, that's so awesome that people do makeup tutorials on YouTube. So I was hooked. One afternoon, my cousins call me up and they were like, Hey, Promise, we're going to go see this really cool movie that just came out and its name is Avatar. And I was like, oh, the name sounds kind of weird. I don't know if I want to go see it. But they're like, no, I heard it's really good. So um, I went with them and when I saw the movie, I was mind blown. It was such a good movie and I wanted to look like a Navi. I wanted to live in Pandora like right now. So I went home and I slept all this blue eyeshadow that I had on my face, try to make myself look like Neteri, and I took a picture of myself and posted it on my Facebook. When my friends saw my avatar look on my Facebook, they said I did a really good job, but I thought they were just being really nice. Um, later, they helped me share the picture, and all of a sudden, I had hundreds and thousands of friend requests and ridiculous amount of feedbacks, so I could not believe my eyes. Also, I got tons of messages from people asking me to do a tutorial on that avatar look. So I filmed a tutorial, put it up, worst editing job ever. But my, the feedback was wonderful. All of my viewers were so kind and so thankful. I was inspired to do more tutorials for uh, all my viewers. My dad has always been really strict with dating. His rule is none of his daughter can date until they're 21. And sometimes he raises it up to 23. So I was kind of around that age and I was looking around. I had some really nice guys that I was talking to at the moment, but there was this one guy that really stood out to me and his name was Steve, which is my husband right now. So he was just really so kind and we just had this instant connection. He he loved animals like I did. He uh, loved the same music. We loved the same food. Um, he was really family oriented and just everything was perfect. So we dated and we decided to get married. It's going to be our three year wedding anniversary this coming July. Um, we also got a little dog, a miniature American Eskimo called Nimbus that you guys have probably seen him on my videos, Facebook, Instagram everywhere sometimes i get really homesick and i wish my parents weren't in the other corner of the world from me and i feel like i miss out on watching my sisters grow up but i know that they're doing really good things back in nepal um, they currently have an orphanage with three kids and they're planning to expand it um, with six more kids soon so that's really exciting 
actually there's a couple more i mean a million more people who are a part of my life now and that's you guys so i just want to take this time to thank you guys for loving me encouraging me and supporting me to do what i love um, even when my teachers and people around me said i wasn't good enough you guys helped me prove that they were wrong and even though i had a really hard time making a handful of friends growing up you guys have been my friends so um you guys are literally my umbrella on a rainy day and my shoe on my bare feet and peanut butter to my bread those are some really bad examples but i just wanted to let you guys know that you guys are really special and thank you for for making my life so much more beautiful by being a part of it so before i leave i just want to give you all a big virtual hug